And now, Old Games with Grandpa Heath. Today's old game, Captain Comic, or Capt... I can only fit Capt. I don't... I've only got four spaces, I can't... I guess I'll switch to FF. That fits. Final Fantasy. Today I'll tell you the story of one game's seemingly contradictory name, even if you already know that story, because that's what old man stories are for. Today, people look at a library of some 11,000 Final Fantasy games and ask, why Final Fantasy? There's nothing final about Final Fantasy. Funny story, developer Squaresoft was in some financial trouble and thought, well, it all comes down to this. And when you have so many failures in a row, you tend to have little reason to think, well, this one is a sure success. So, convinced that this one game was going to be the last one, Hironobu Sakaguchi titled it Final Fantasy. And if he was going to go out, he was going to do it like Kurt Cobain. Mine is not the dying. Uh, the better to uh, burn out than fade. Wow, that, I got dark with that shit. If he would have gone out, it would have been with a bang. Final Fantasy was pretty ambitious for the time. It's unplayable garbage by today's standards, but, I mean, for the time, it was... yeah. Before you stab me, I'm not saying Final Fantasy was a bad game. Well, if you're gonna play the NES version, go ahead if that's what you really want to do. If you're going to play the game today, especially if you're gonna play it for the first time, I recommend the PSP version, or the Game Boy Advance version, Dawn of Souls, which is a great little package, and it's got Final Fantasy II bundled right into, into it, so... As an old cranky negative asshole, what I remember most was defeating enemies, and then my next guy would attack, or would have also been set to attack that same enemy that is now defeated, and so now he just doesn't do shit. In newer games, when Warrior A attacks Monster A and kills it, but Warrior B had originally planned on attacking Monster A too, well, Warrior B just now attacks Monster B, and that's it. No, not in the first Final Fantasy. If one person knocks somebody out, then anything else that was going to happen to him is cancelled for the round. This was especially stupid with your magicians. If you had black mages and white mages and stuff, their magic could only be used so many times, and restoring it was a lot more of a pain in the ass in Final Fantasy than it was than it is in more recent games. The number of charges was pretty small. Restoring them could only be done at certain places. Yeah, it's just gone like you used it, but you didn't. And having that happen was a pain in the butt. Some purists might like it that way and say that the change to the more modern system with the, the re-releases, it changes the way you play. And yeah, it does. It's a change for the better. Trying to go back to the NES version, I can't help but notice how many quality of life updates have come in sequels that have followed. Like, I remember in the first Final Fantasy, reviving dead characters, well, knocked out characters. Well, maybe they were dead, I, I don't remember. They, they were they were lying on the ground motionless, is the point. Reviving them was a pain in the ass. You picked your characters and their job class right at the beginning. With no context at all, you just picked like, okay, I want a fighter, black mage, a black belt, and how about a red mage or something like that. So, like, you didn't even have to have a white mage. You might not have had one in your group. I sure as hell did. And some people uh, like to make a fun game of rolling four white mages and punishing themselves that way, and that, that's an interesting little challenge there, but, so you could use a white mage spell, as I mentioned, you've got a very limited quantity, or if you could drag your ass all the way back to town, you could be revived at a church, or at least they were churches in the Japanese version of the game. Fun fact, in the western version of the game, the cross on the building was changed to a heart, because in the west, we like to keep church out of the godless hellscape that is video games. There were things about Final Fantasy that felt cool and that we still use today. The battle screens broke a trend. Dragon Warrior, uh, Enix's Dragon Warrior, well, in North America it was called Dragon Warrior, in Japan it was Dragon Quest. Basically, Japanese developers 
fell in love with wizardry and tried to make it their own version of that. And a lot of Japanese RPGs were trying to do that, not just Dragon Quest. And so they were first person view, because the Western RPG, oh boy, I'm getting sidetracked. The Western RPG is all about this is happening to you, and Japanese RPGs didn't always start out that way. It was more about this is a story about these people. It, it tells you a story rather than makes you part of a story. Anyway, so Final Fantasy went with the, the side view. You saw all of your characters on one side, all of your opponents on the other. Like, you could see what was flashing and see what was going on without having to read, like, King Slime attacked, uh, Steve and did 50 damage. It's like, that's not a hard sentence to read, but when you have to read every single thing that happens in a battle, it gets annoying. I have I have trouble going back to that. It's like, let me read the numbers, let me read the occasional message that, uh, like, a status effect has shown up or something, and let's move on. When you selected your job classes and picked your four characters in Final Fantasy, you got to name all your characters right away using a total of four spaces because it was Japanese and with each space you could put a whole syllable there so you could call somebody Nakamura and somebody else Akira with space to spare but with only four spaces like in the North American version in the English language uh no that requires a lot more letter space and so people had to really condense names or just pick Bob John Tom Dave, Bell, Lynn, Kate, Jess, Ted, Dina, Dana, Donna with one N, Ken. What grabs you right away is the music of Final Fantasy. You start off with the story and that crystal theme. That was good. The overworld map theme, yeah, that was good too. And then you walk into town, and that town theme still just makes me go, aww. Aww. One secret to Final Fantasy's success was its core creative team was like this holy trinity of people that knew what was up. They were the right people in exactly the right place. Hironobu Sakaguchi directing it, writing it, supervising the whole thing. Yoshitaka Amano doing the art and Nobuo Uematsu doing the soundtrack. And what a job he did. I love that there's little tracks that hardly ever show up in the Final Fantasy soundtracks that are still really good. Even in the first Final Fantasy, Matoya's Cave, you go there once, twice, but the song that plays in there is damn good. Such a good little track, but only plays in that one place. One musical difference you'll notice in the NES version that will seem really weird today, going back, is that the battle theme for regular enemies is the same as the boss battle theme. Like, it doesn't change when you fight a boss. It's the same music as if you're fighting, like, this one imp in the forest. Dawn of Souls on the Game Boy Advance and the PSP version remixed that battle theme, but kept the core. They just sort of made it more boss-ish. I don't know if the mobile phone or the Wonder Swan versions did that too. I've never played those, so I don't know. I have no desire to play those. I've played Final Fantasy already. I'm not gonna go get it on my freaking flip phone, and I'm not gonna pick up a Wonder Swan for it. Oh, damn it, maybe I will. It's hard to believe that there was a time when I looked at the Final Fantasy box and then put in this, and, you know, nobody nobody thought anything of it. Yeah. That's my warrior. I'm just gonna go fight some monsters and stuff. You can also see from the box how much the the western side of things was trying to cash in on the wizards and warriors and dungeons and dragons popularity. They were really trying to sell this to the tabletop role-playing crowd by using artwork similar to like D&D sets. Final Fantasy story seems simple on the surface. Hey, four heroes save the world, right? Actually, there was a lot to it. There were twists and surprise on the actual bad guy and time travel and, well, crap, the bad guy's been assembled from this, and... It actually, it was a lot more complicated than just, Hey, I'm evil. You wanna fight? Cause I'll kill you. Oh, you got me. The end. 
it's hard not to continue into other Final Fantasy games when you get started talking about the first one, because a lot of things carried over into most, if not all, future games. This game quite literally saved Squaresoft, and so it's easy to see why they made this franchise like a tentpole, and why they still go back to it. It's hard to stop myself by just talking about Final Fantasy because its impact on the industry, the console wars, and the developer Squaresoft that merged with Enix later and became Square Enix, it's hard to imagine what it would have been like if Squaresoft had just called it quits and not released Final Fantasy. Some things that it did undoubtedly would have shown up sooner or later, but what kind of games would we have gotten? What kind of games would we not have right now? And would we be able to go back in time and fight a collection of those games that I am trying to make a reference to how you have to beat the four fiends and final boss of Final Fantasy. See how that, they become chaos. They become chaos and you have to like go back in time and, and beat. I couldn't, couldn't pull, couldn't pull it off, shit. Jack, Jill, Corey, Rory, Lori, Jory, Tori, Ori. Nori, which is Japanese for seaweed. Well, not if you say it like Nori. If you say it like Nori, then you're getting somewhere. What am I doing? Oh! Oh! And now I'm coming to get you! You better run! And now back in town, what a venture we had. What is this place? I don't know. 